Hey everybody, Patton here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to play PlayStation 1 games on your mini system. Surprisingly, PlayStation 1 games play really well on the minis. But first, a quick recap on how to mod your mini. You want to go to the kernel tab in HackGCE and go to install repair. Click yes. Connect your mini system to your PC. While holding reset, power on and HackG will do the rest. Once you see the green light in the bottom left corner, you're good to go. The first thing we want to do is go to the Modules tab, then to the KMFD Mod Hub. Go to the KMFD RetroArch tab, select the version of RetroArch you want to use, then click Download Module. Next, go to the KMFD Cores tab, scroll down till you get to the Sony PlayStation section. You have a few options to choose from here, but I personally like the PCSX Rearmed Neon. Once again, go to Download Module, close out the Mod Hub, go back to your Modules tab, and install extra modules. Put a check mark next to your PS1 core and RetroArch, then click OK at the bottom. Once they finish installing, you'll get this done message. Next up, we're going to add our BIOS files. So we're going to the Tools tab, Open FTP Client. We're going to navigate to ETC, LibRetro, and System. This is the folder where you want to put your BIOS files. Just highlight them, drag them directly into this folder and you're all set. Make sure you have all three of these BIOS files and they are spelled exactly the same that you see on here. Make sure they are all lowercase and you have the right numbering. Close the system folder and now we're going to add our games. We're going to start with Diablo. They are in bin and queue form. I recommend any games that you get should be in bin and queue form. Instead of taking both files and putting them in Hatchy, just take the queue file, drag that in, and if we check the folder location, you can see the bin file was added automatically. Now for multi-disc games like Parasite Eve 2, things are done a little bit different. We're going to take the disk one queue file, drag that into HackG, and when we check the folder, we have our bin file as well. If you don't want to have disk one and two on your SNES Classic menu or NES Classic menu, you can do this. With your mini folder opened up, and you can tell this is the mini folder because it goes from HackG to games to the CLV folder. So this is the folder that the mini created. Take your disk 2 bin and queue files and drag them into this folder. That way you can have both disks under one listing. Hatchy doesn't automatically populate the box art, so to get that, highlight your games, right click, and go to Scrape Selected Games. Select your game on the left, and then on the right, select the system it is for. Once you're done, click OK. Now we have our box art and description. Your command line is filled in automatically, but if you want to manually change this, this is what you do. Highlight your games, right click, and go to Select Emulation Core. In the next window, highlight your games again, make sure Sony PlayStation is selected at the top, and then the core you selected is highlighted at the bottom. Click Apply, then Close. Because these games are so big, we will need external storage to play them. Insert your flash drive into your PC, then click Export to USB. Make sure the drive you're using is selected here, then click OK. Once they're finished transferring, you'll get this done message. Remove your flash drive from your PC, insert it into your OTG cable, insert your power cord into your OTG cable, and then insert the cable into your mini. If you're having any issues getting this to work, you can go to the Rock in the Classics Discord server or subreddit for help. That's all there is to it, let's head over to the SNES Classic and take a look. We're going to take a look at Diablo first. Looks like it's loading up fine, and the game looks to be running very well. Now for Parasite Eve 2. And before we get started, I actually loaded disc 2 to show you how to switch discs. So right now, disc 2 is inserted into the PlayStation. If we hit start and go to new game, it's asking us to change to disc 1. So to do that, we're going to go into the RetroArch menu by holding select and pushing start. At the bottom of the quick menu, we have disk control. You want to hit eject disk, go to load new disk, and then we're going to select disk one bin from our options. Then insert disk. And now the game starts up as normal. The game looks and plays very well, although 
You're going to have to mess with the controls if you want to play this one. You need more shoulder buttons. And that's all there is. Once again, if you're having any problems getting these to run, you can go to the Rockin' the Classics Discord server or subreddit for help. And that's all I got for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.